Hi, Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Um, so I nearly always use a hoop, embroidery hoop, when I'm stitching, but many people don't. So I thought I would talk about this in this video, how to stitch with one, how to stitch without one. And we'll also look at the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. So this is a standard embroidery hoop. I'm sure you've all seen one of these. It's made of two hoops that fit together. You trap the fabric between the hoops and then you can tighten it here to make your fabric nice and tight, ready to stitch on. So there are other types of frames you can use also. So we've got stretcher bar frames like this here. So pieces of wood that make a frame and then you pin your fabric to the frame. And then we've got a roller bar frame here. So they're getting a little bit bigger now. So you attach your fabric to the rollers and you can use a longer piece of fabric. And then they go right up to these beasts over here. So this, this is um, a slate frame. This is 24 inch slate frame. So you can see um, how big we're getting now. And we can do a project on that. We can wrap it around as well. And these slate frames get much bigger than this much, much bigger. Um, but that's as big as I've got there. So in this video, I'm going to talk about frames. So that's going to cover all of these different kind of frames. Um, and I'm going to use that term throughout the video. Um, so it covers anything that you're going to use to hold your fabric tight. So the main thing that you need to know is that there are two different ways of stitching depending on if you use a frame or not. So if you use the appropriate method for a frame and for loose fabric, you'll find stitching much easier. So let's look at those methods first. So the first one I'm going to show is how to stitch um, with your fabric in a frame. So we're going to use um, what's called the stab method. So we're going to go up and down in the fabric. So I've got a piece of fabric in my frame here. Got some light cotton. Now this is quite tight in here, so I've made it quite tight in my frame. So what I'm going to do is stab the needle down. So I'll show you that now. So I'm going to come up in the fabric from the back and then to form my stitch, I'm going to stab down through the fabric and make one stitch. I'm just going to do a running stitch to show you and then I'm going to come up and back down. So I'm doing this stitch in two movements. I've got an up from the back movement and then stab down from the front. So I'm making my stitches with two separate movements and I'm moving my hand from the top of the fabric, the top of the hoop to the back of the hoop like so. And I'll just show you with another stitch. So if you wanted to do a blanket stitch, you would stab down from the front. My hand goes underneath the hoop at the back. So that's the first movement. That's the second movement. One movement. Two movements. So I'm doing my stitch in two separate movements rather than just one. And that's the same for every stitch that you do. So you take your hand to the back and you work from the back and then back to the front and you do your stitching two movements. So just before I show you um, on loose fabric, I just want to mention about our YouTube membership. So we've just started these and this is a way for you to get some extra perks from our normal YouTube videos and community content and to support our channel at the same time. So what you get for that is you get a badge that you can use next to your name, which will make your comments show up um, against everyone else's, a chance to contribute to our videos too, some extra PDF designs um, and member only videos as well when um, as and when we can. Um, you can check out my video all about membership so just click the join button that you can see down here next to the subscribe button um, to see that video and see what it's all about if you can't see the join button there is a direct link um, below the, in the description below this video and that will take you straight there so let's now have a look at um, stitching without a frame so I'm going to show you the same stitch now but um, a different method of doing it because we don't have the support of the frame so I'm going to bring my needle in from the back now. So we're going to do the running stitch. So now we're going to do it in one movement, not two movements. So we're going to really work everything from the top now because it's very hard to get underneath. So I'm going to go in for my first stitch. Then you can see how I'm just pressing that fabric up. I'm just manipulating it to get the needle through. Then we can go back down and we can go back up. 
So this is a kind of running stitch method, even though I am doing running stitch, it's a running method, not a stab up and down method. So we're going to do the stitch in one go. Like so. And then when you've run out of needle, you can pull that through. And you can see there's my running stitch. Now it is a little bit harder to judge the distance of your stitches, um, but that just comes with practice. So everything from the top And again, that works with other stitches as well. So let's show you a buttonhole stitch. So um, before on a frame, we went down into the back. My hand went round the back and I stabbed it back to the front. We're going to do that in one movement here. So down and up from the top. And then you would pull it tight. So it's exactly the same stitch. <laughs> Ginger cat's invading my camera space. So you do everything from the top, so you sort of pretend you can't get to the back. It's a little bit hard to do it neater because you can see the fabric moving a lot. So it is a little bit hard to make it neater. But you just do everything from the top in the running stitch method. So it's quite hard to swap these methods over. So to do the running stitch method, for example, on a piece of fabric in a frame um, is much harder. So the tension of the fabric makes it difficult to manipulate the fabric to work the stitches. So I'll just show you that and show you what I mean. So let's just finish off that buttonhole stitch. So say now I want to do this running stitch method. So my fabric's tight in my frame. And I'm going to go down and then push the fabric up to get the needle in. Now it's much harder to push that fabric because I'm fighting the tension of it on the frame. And then if I want to go back in, I've got to push it back down. See that moving there? Push it back up, push it back down. I'm actually distorting this fabric. I've got it nice and tight. I don't really want to loosen it or move it or um, stretch it or anything like that. So you can do this method but it's not great on the fabric because I'm having to fight it and I'm pushing against it. So you see I can, but just that pushing is making it much harder. So let's try the stab method on the fabric without the frame. So you might see many YouTube videos where they do the running method on fabric in a frame, but watch carefully how they have to push the fabric to get the needle through. So it's much better to do that without the frame. But let's just show you what the stab method is like without the frame, just so we've done it both ways. And so you can see that that's not easy either. So I'm coming from the back to do the buttonhole stitch. I'm going down to the back and I'm having to sort of fight this fabric. I've got to get it out of the way. I've got to flick it over. I'm going to pull my needle through, find where I want to come up, back to the front, back through to the back. I've got to fight my way underneath again and come back to the front. So it is actually quite difficult to swap those methods over. So if you can stick to the right method um, for a frame and the right method without, you'll find it much easier. So that tells you how to stitch with and without a frame, but it doesn't tell you when to to use which, so let's have a look at that now. Okay, so some advantage of using a frame. So putting your fabric in a hoop will give you a really nice tension to work on. So it's easy to stitch on because your fabric isn't moving around. Um, it'll reduce the risk of puckering um, and any bubbles in your work. So just a much more solid surface to work on. Um, it's also easier to hold in your hand, so you have something solid to hold rather than floppy fabric. Um, this in return um, will reduce the strain on your fingers and your muscles um, and make it much easier to stitch for longer because you're not hurting your hands. So you can put the frame in a clamp um, and then work both hands free. So you can attach it in here and um, that will hold it still. And then you've got two hands to work with. So this is great if you have restricted movement in your hands or your fingers um, because you don't have to hold anything. You can just concentrate on forming the stitches. So there are some techniques um, and stitches which can only really be done when the fabric is in a hoop or on a frame. So some stitches that are hard to do, for example, um, French knots, um, bullion knots as well, any kind of trellis work, trellis stitch. Um, and I'll demo a French knot, I think, um, because that shows what I mean quite well. So I've got my loose fabric here and I just want to show you a French knot because their one is that quite difficult to 
to do so I'm going to have to put it down on the table so they can actually wrap my needle so we go around once like that I then got to get that needle back into the fabric so I actually dug it into the table to do that pull around the needle to tighten it then I've got to pick the fabric up I'm going to take the needle through to the back and pull it through to the back so you can see how tricky that actually is to do just do one more so I've actually got to put it down through to the back and I'm going to pick it up and hold that at the same time and pull it through so it is possible to do it but it is quite tricky to do um so bullion knots are the same trellis is difficult because you're covering a large area and um your fabric's all on the move um so definitely stitches that you can't do um when the fabric isn't in a hoop so some techniques that are hard to do um, include things like gold work because you really need two hands free to work the different techniques involved in gold work. Tambour work, um, if you haven't seen my set of videos on this that I did with Caroline, you will see that you can't do this technique um, without the use of both hands for stitching. Um, you definitely need to have that in a hoop. Um, and sashiko work, um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute um, when we look at working on loose fabric. So the last thing I want to mention is if you are working on a large project. So these can get really unwieldy um, and you don't need to be fighting with the fabric. So you will find a frame is essential for anything that's really larger or up to 24 inch and larger. Um, imagine working 70 metres of the Bayo tapestry um, and doing it all in your hands. It's just not going to happen. Okay, some reasons why working in a frame is not so great. So the frames can mark the fabric if you're not careful. So hoops can leave a mark where the fabric is trapped. Um, so if you want to use a hoop, I recommend taking your work out when you aren't actually doing any stitching and put it back in the hoop when you're ready to start again. And that will help to reduce this. Um, you can also bind your hoops like this here. Um, that will help to add some protection as well from the wood um, and the fabric. Um, and even trap a layer of tissue in between the two hoops. And again, that will protect your fabric a little bit more. So if you're using stretcher bars, the pins can mark the fabric around the edge. Um, so make sure that you add enough extra on the outside of your design that you can cut these um, extra bits off if you need to. Um, and that applies to the larger frames also. Give yourself lots of fabric um, to avoid any um, damage on the edges. So there are other types of frames like Q-snap frames. So these are plastic um, and they don't damage the fabric too much. But because they're plastic, they don't tend to hold the fabric very tight in the first place. So different frames will do uh, react in different ways. So if you wanted to stitch a large piece of embroidery on a piece of clothing, for example, um, you really want to stitch it at the tension that it will be when you want to wear it. So if you stitch it on a tight frame, um, then when you take it off the frame and you put it on yourself, um, the fabric will relax and the stitches will get all tight and they can pucker up um, the embroidery. So best to do it at the tension you want to have it at when you're finished. Um, so stitching on a frame can actually be <laughs> not stressful, but it's not um, very relaxing. So this is kind of my idea about this, really. But sometimes I think we lead um, fast, hectic lives and can hold a lot of tension in our bodies. And when you're working on a tight frame, um, especially if you would naturally have a tight tension like I do, you can just add to the tension in your body. Um, so just something to think about if that is a problem with you. So using a frame um, can actually often bring you a lot of tension. I think we have a lot of tension in our everyday lives anyway. We're stressful, we're running around doing things. Um, and then putting something tightly in a frame can make it even more tense and then you tense up. Um, and working without a frame can actually counterbalance that and it can actually make you relax a little bit. So you're just holding the fabric loose in your hand. You're not holding everything tightly. Um, and that just helps you to relax and then makes your st stitching more relaxing as well. So when I was in India, um, I didn't actually see anybody using a hoop at all. Um, they always held their embroidery in their hands and worked it that way. So it did um, inspire me to try that method um, a little bit more in my life. So working without a frame is better for some techniques. So working on clothing, for example, we've mentioned already. Quilting as well. If you've got a great big quilt, um, it's hard to get that in a frame, um, but you can work that much easier in your hand as well. And that's going to be um, laid over a bed or something. So that's um, going to be the tension that it's at when it's finished. So you don't want to start with a nice tight tension on that. Um, and sashiko work. So I mentioned this earlier. This is Japanese technique, um, which basically is all about running stitch. Um, so there isn't a 
Indian equivalent um, called camphor, but I wanted to mention, mention sashiko specifically because of the needles they use. So let me just show you what that method is. So this is a little cushion that I made with it on. Um, it was often done on indigo fabrics and they would use it to fix um, cloths basically together when the cloths that they used to wash with had worn out they'd layer them together and they'd stitch them back up and make a new cloth so they stitched them with a very basic running stitch and they would do that with a white thread so those again were things that weren't wouldn't be made on a frame that you make in your hand because it's something you're going to use so I made this cushion here but I just want to show you the needles so this is a set of sashiko needles and they're these are actually short ones but they're still pretty long so they're longer than an ordinary embroidery needle Ooh, magnetic as well so you can see how much longer they are and the reason that they're longer is so that you can do more of the running stitch in one go so remember the running method because we're holding it in our hand and because we've got a nice long needle we can get lots of stitches in in one go and that's much faster than going from the front to the back see how many I can do with that needle so a nice long section in one go so specifically made for working a technique in your hand So what are the disadvantages of working something in your hand? Um, so the main one that I find is that it can actually hurt your hands. So it often hurts my hands between my thumb and my finger here. Um, if I do it for too long, um, this is always the bit that strains the most. So um, it can be quite painful on the joints. So the fabric can pucker quite easily too. So if you aren't making clothing or a hanging or a quilt, then do consider using a frame um, to avoid those unsightly puckers between your embroidery stitches because it does look terrible when it all bunches up like that. Some stitches and techniques are much harder or not possible at all without a frame. So I've mentioned timbre, but consider things like making an altar frontal if you were to do that and how big they are and how would you possibly get to the middle of it to do your stitching? How would you get lots of people working on it at the same time um, and manage all of that fabric without a frame? So there are definitely times when you do need a frame. So I hope you've learned something about when to use a frame and when not to and how to choose when you might want to use one. Um, so don't forget those two methods I showed you at the beginning. Those are important. And if you aren't sure um, which is best for you, just try out some samples with a hoop and without a hoop and see for yourself what works and what doesn't work for you. So if you'd like to get involved with future videos, do consider joining our channel membership um, because I will be asking for input from our members for future content. Don't forget you can join by clicking on that join button next to the subscribe button. If you can't see that, don't forget the link in the description below this video, which you can click on and that takes you straight to the membership page. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you liked it. That helps more people to see it. And we've got loads of other videos as well. Do check those out. And, and Ginger Cat and I will see you in the next video. Hey, buddy. Are we done? Okay, matey. We're done.